Gaming Bolt presents the 15 most evil villains you couldn't wait to get your hands on. Most video games have a villain or two that the player strives to beat. Maybe they're difficult, maybe they're just annoying, or maybe the player feels they're just morally wrong. Sometimes those bosses make the player unable to wait to get to the boss fight, where they finally get the chance to beat the living crap out of that boss they just hate. And fair warning, there are spoilers ahead. With that out of the way, let's talk about 15 evil villains you couldn't wait to get your hands on. Dr. Wallace Breen, Half-Life 2 In the Half-Life series, there was a character known as the Administrator. Even though you never saw him in person, you probably felt like he'd be a villain. If you had that feeling, good on you. As in the sequel, the Administrator was revealed as Dr. Wallace Breen, a scientist who was the Administrator for the Black Mesa Research Facility during the Black Mesa incident in the first game. Now, taking place 20 years later, Breen had sent all available Combine forces to either capture or kill Gordon Freeman. Later on, Breen found himself with Gordon Freeman in his custody and shown signs that he was well aware of the mysterious G-Man's control over Freeman. Curtis Blackburn, Killer7 Let's talk about video games that put the player in a set position. This is often called on-rail games. This meant the player was incapable of moving from place to place on their own free will and was forced to defeat the enemies in front of them before moving on. An example of that gameplay style is Killer7. Playing as an on-screen member of the assassin group, Killer7, the game was put in chapters or scenarios with different enemies to fight. In the fourth chapter of the game, the player has to face off against the infamous organ trafficker Curtis Blackburn. With an interest in organ trafficking, any normal person would see him as a terrible man, but it gets worse. Blackburn had killed at least two people who he believed betrayed him, though one of them was framed, and while searching for the victims, he'll not shy away from killing any witnesses or bystanders around the area. Dr. Angus Bumby Alice Madness Returns Doctors are supposed to help people when they're in need of treatment. Whether it's a broken leg or complete loss of sanity, doctors are there to aid you in the path of healing. But let's face it, it's going to take more than an apple a day to keep this doctor away. Angus Bumby was an undergraduate who had fallen for the uninterested sister of Alice, Elizabeth. The lack of interest led him to abuse her and even go as far as forcing himself on her before he used an oil lamp and caused the fire that led to Alice's insanity and her being committed to Rutledge Asylum for treatment. Ten years later, and Bumby was a psychiatrist and ran the Houndsditch home for wayward youth, which was where Alice was sent to live and work by her former nurse. Bumby also tried to completely eradicate any form of evidence of his crime, so he began helping Alice by giving her hypnotherapy to try and forget the past, but it didn't work. His track record gets even worse though. When the player confronts him about the past, he confirmed her accusations of abusing children and exploiting them for his own financial gain. Arcturus Minsk, Starcraft Violence is always the answer. Wait, that can't be right. Oh right, it's violence is never the answer. But to be fair, Arcturus Mengsk, an antagonist in the real-time strategy game StarCraft, sure seems to disagree. Mengsk was a Terran born on Coral IV. He led a group of rebels against the oppressive Confederacy of Man, and this led him to using tactics better suited for genocide and committing treason. He then crowned himself the Emperor of the Terran Dominion, a newly formed group to replace the Confederacy. However, it didn't take long for Manx to change and turn into the people he desired to replace. He still utilized fear and manipulation methods to rule over the people. Arden Izunia, Final Fantasy XV There are so many villains to choose from in the Final Fantasy series, but for this entry, we chose Arden Izunia from Final Fantasy XV. Shrouded in mystery, Izunia has a fashion sense that radiates his eccentric attitude. He's also very much flamboyant, polite and civil, even in the midst of danger. Izunia acts unfazed and even calm, no matter how the world is reacting around him. He has high influence around the Empire, making him able to get his way easily. 
He also believed he was entitled to be able to call the protagonist Noct, which is what Noct's best friends call him, despite the fact that they were far from being friends. He wants nothing more than to fight and become the true king. He's even so sure he'd become it that he refuses to kill Noctis until the time comes. William Carver, Telltale's The Walking Dead Season 2 An apocalypse can show the real side of humanity. How will people react to stressful situations? How much can a person take before they snap? And how cruel does a man have to be to keep order? The Walking Dead Season 2 has the player play as Clementine, a teenager who grew up during the outbreak. From 8 years old, the player watched her grow up to be currently 13. The game series is a roller coaster of emotions for Clementine, as she was forced to grow up at such an early age. Telltale's The Walking Dead Season 2, you are introduced to William Carver, a brutal leader of a community based on a house hardware. He can be kind, but can become cruel at nearly a drop of the hat, from killing Reggie to severely beating Kenny over some stolen walkie-talkies, only to stop when there was a breach and he had to investigate. In the end, Carver was shot in the legs and beaten to death with a crowbar, a fitting end for such a cruel person. Officer Frank Tenpenny, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas Officers are hired to protect the general public, that being said, sometimes they can be corrupt, as with the case of Officer Frank Tenpenny, the main antagonist of GTA San Andreas. Not only is he affiliated with the Community Resources Against Street Hoodlums, otherwise known as Crash, which is meant to stop gangs, but he's also a highly corrupt officer. Using his knowledge of gangs and his power, he managed to force them to give them supplies and profit. They're also not against brutality, as it's something they do on a regular basis. Kai Lang, Mass Effect 3 Raise your hand if you're a Mass Effect fan. Kai Lang was a side antagonist in the third installment in the mainline games. Kai Lang is an assassin that's part of Cerberus, an organization in the franchise that prioritizes humans and believes that they deserve a bigger role than they have in the galactic community. Lang is equipped with various items such as a sword for close combat, a stealth cloak, a kinetic barrier, and more. He will kill either Thane or Captain Karahi depending on how the player plays the previous games, and in the end, Kai Lang dies to the player's hands. Vas, Far Cry 3 Oh, big surprise, it's Vas from Far Cry 3. Well, it's kind of hard not to bring him up in this kind of countdown. He is simply or for lack of a better word, evil. Vars was the antagonist of the first half of Far Cry 3. Not only did he kidnap the player and their friends, but he also planned to sell them into slavery. Words like sadistic, unpredictable, and crazy come to mind to describe this insanity-loving freak that the player can never get away from until his demise. Volgan, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater And here's a Metal Gear entry. Volgin first appeared as the main antagonist in Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. He has tremendous strength and electrokinesis, earning him the nickname Thunderbolt. During Operation Snake Eater, Volgin hired the boss to kill Naked Snake. During the operation, Volgin thought that Granin was a spy, so as a response, he arrested him and tortured him to try and get him to talk. However, with his stupendous strength and electrical powers, Granin had died before he told him anything. To make sure the boss wasn't a spy, he told her to cut out Snake's eyes. What a crazy guy we have right here. Kefka Palazzo, Final Fantasy VI We couldn't just pick only one Final Fantasy villain. After all, there are just way too many. So here we have Kefka Palazzo from Final Fantasy VI. One thing that makes him stand out compared to other FF villains is his overall attitude. Unlike most villains, Kefka is far from the normal formula that Final Fantasy lives by. Normally, bosses are dark, cold, brooding, and not willing to stop until they reach their goal. Kefka was destructive, maniacal, and short-tempered, and quite loud. Most of the time, games shy away from having the player fight the main villain repeatedly, as a precaution to not make the boss stale or uninteresting. But, Kefka was fought a number of times throughout the game, 
And while he began as weak and cowardly, as his insanity grew and his influence, he began getting increasingly stronger. This led to the final battle where you were not fighting him in a single battle, but rather you had to fight your way up a tier. David, The Last of Us Storytelling was a big strong point when it came down to The Last of Us. It really knew how to pull at the heartstrings of the gamer to make them feel sorry for the protagonists. In the winter chapter of The Last of Us, we were given the opportunity to play as Ellie, a teenage girl who, for one reason or another, was immune to the virus that caused men and women to turn into fungal monstrosities, known as the infected. During the chapter, the player is introduced to David, a man who tried to befriend the skeptical Ellie. After fighting hordes of infected together, Ellie and David found themselves talking. David brought up the philosophy that everything happens for a reason, but Ellie doesn't believe that. The following day, Ellie found herself kidnapped by David and his men, a group known as the Cannibals, who eat travelers as means of survival. After running from him in the snow, the player will find themselves in a large open building in a stealth scenario. While you have to sneak around, David made it more difficult by setting the place on fire. But at least you got a very satisfying conclusion once you did defeat him. Richard Traeger, Outlast Horror games always know how to push the right buttons to make the player horrified. Richard Traeger was a former employee of the Murkoff Corporation. After his insanity nearly caused the company's inhumane ways to be surfaced, Traeger was committed to Mount Massive Asylum as a patient. Traeger was unsympathetic, cruel, and had a deep-rooted desire to maim and even kill people. He'd even killed a number of people before the protagonist, but all he wound up doing was cutting off two of his fingers. In the end, an elevator was his downfall. Jigsaw Saw Ah, Jigsaw. A villain that's very much morally questionable at best. Jigsaw, for those who don't know, refers to the villain from the psychological horror movie series Saw, but there was a video game series based on the movies. In the game, you take control of Detective David Tapp, who was shot. He was then saved by Jigsaw. Saw was a survival horror game, and as the player playing in a third-person perspective. Jigsaw is, as many know, the main villain of the series, and is quite twisted, though his intentions are simple. He wants everyone to have an appreciation for life. To do so, he tends to go through developing dangerous traps. Death's Head, Wolfenstein The New Order Sometimes villains are completely morally wrong. Wolfenstein The New Order has the player go against Wilhelm Strasser, aka Death's Head, a recurring character from the previous game. He was a part of the German armed forces and a doctor that led the SS Special Projects Division. He then aided in improving technology, which heavily improved Nazi Germany's chance to win. He had also revamped and improved upon his older projects, such as Super Soldiers. He became heavily influential in the Nazi regime, though he definitely got what was coming to him. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.